That's not supposed to be like that. That is really, really bad. Look how beautiful this looks. That's how it's supposed to look all the time. shit out of me? That's right. You already saw him. Kel. Tired as hell, man. And he shows up. You know, doesn't offer me beer. I don't know what's wrong with this guy. But, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna give you guys a treat. I'm gonna show you guys how to change the brake pads on this Durango Hellcat. So, I'm gonna show you guys the process and the reason why behind it. So come and check this out. All right guys, believe it or not, yes, you're gonna think that this dirt right here is just dirt from driving around. That is not dirt from driving around. That's dirt and dust from the brake pads. Yes, this is disgusting, guys. They'll sell you a $100,000 vehicle, it doesn't matter if it's a GT500, a Camaro ZL1, even a Corvette ZR1. They'll sell you these cars, guys, and believe it or not, they'll come this bad. They'll come out this dusty, this disgusting, that's not supposed to be like that. That is really, really bad. So we're gonna take care of this problem and the way we're gonna take care of this issue is by installing these brake pads. We're gonna get rid of this Brembo compound semi-metallic junk crap and we're gonna replace it with these extreme power stops. They're carbon ceramic uh, brake pads. And they're gonna protect your brakes from getting all damaged and whatnot. So this is going to stop the brake dust probably by 85 to 95%. So um, get ready guys. I'm going to show you guys a tutorial how to remove the brake pads, how to reinstall these brake pads. It's very easy. And then I'm going to do a little detail how I scrub the wheels up and get them back to factory. Make them look brand new again so they can stay that way from now on. This is literally just dust in the calipers. I don't know if you can get that. But it's literally just trickling down brake dust. This is horrible. Brand new $100,000 vehicle. And they're just gonna like, put some crap compound pads on it. Three tools you're gonna need, that's all you need. A little punch, a little screwdriver, something that you can pop these little pins out that I'm about to show you in a second. 13 millimeter socket. A uh, regular ratchet, doesn't have to be this fancy one or whatever, it's just a hammer. Now that we got a good visual of the actual caliper, believe it or not, these are actually small compared to the, um, the Hellcats. The Hellcats are a lot bigger. They're all six piston Brembos, it's just this one's a little smaller for some reason. The, the Trackhawks and the Durango Hellcats are just a little different. So we're going to start off by taking this little 13 millimeter off. All right, y'all, so after you take out the 13 millimeter bolt, you can see these little pins. These little holes are there for a reason. Same thing on the bottom. And this little clip right here, this big bracket is actually like a, it's a tension bracket. So if you push down on it, I like to give it like a little tap with the hammer and then pull out and look, this comes out and this basically just starts dangling down. Pull out the other pin, take out the pins, put them on the tray or put them somewhere else. And uh, this one we have to take out as well. So what I do is I'll take the 13 millimeter back and I put it back in the actual, uh, I guess you could say tension bolt or something like that. I don't know why, but it's a retain bolt. And then I'll, I'll put the bolt back in and I'll give it a little tap. Now it's free. Don't let this carbon buildup get too bad because I've seen these pins get stuck. Or they won't come out because there's so much carbon buildup. And some of you veterans out there just like me know that, you know, if you let your AR-15 get, you know, built up with too much carbon, it's going to be a pain in the butt clean that thing later. 
We're actually trying to take it apart. So I'll put the bolt back on there, put it down there, it's good to go. This is the easy part, guys. So easy to do these brakes. So what I do is I'll take my hammer or a flathead screwdriver of some sort, and you see these pads? I'll put pressure into the piston. So I'll pull in on the bottom and on top. What happens is you're trying to compress the pistons inside the caliper into the reservoir. Try to get the fluid out of it so that they just come out easy. See how easy that was? These are shit. These Brembos are crap. Most people who buy these Durangos, Hellcats, Trackhawks, it doesn't matter who you are. You're not gonna go to the track. You don't need this compound. This is shit. Italy, I don't care if you're made there. It is crap. The other side is loose because the other um, pad is not present. So we just take it out. Look how much crap is in. Look at all that compound. That's all brake dust. That's crazy, man. Look at this. That's all brake dust. Let me show you guys. Look how bad this is. That's brake dust. That's what's been flying on his car. All right, we got our hardware. It comes with all new pins, new, um, I don't know, tension brackets, I guess you could call them. Uh, new brake pads, the good compound, so this crap doesn't happen again, and more often, actually. All right, so basically reverse order. Slide the pads in. All right, y'all, so the rear is a lot more simple. That big bolt that we had to tighten with the 13 millimeter, we don't need that back here. We literally just have two pins and a retainer clip, and that's all we gotta do. Same thing as before. You're gonna grab the pads, and you're gonna pull. See how it goes in a little bit? Push in. You pull. You're just trying to get the pistons to compress into the red of the calipers so that it comes out like this. Okay? Junk. All right. That's literally all it takes to change the brake pads on a Brembo style. So please do me a favor. Understand something, guys. When you're working on like a Brembo setup, it's called a floating caliper. What that means is you can basically spin the rotor and the brakes never get removed. On other applications for floating calipers, you do have to swing the actual caliper up, but uh, I don't think you have a Viper. <laughs> um, but if you do, yeah, that'll, that'll be the situation. But on situations like this, man, the two pins, the pads slide out, and that's all you gotta do. Don't you dare, I'll dirty. charge you full price. All right. You know what, Manny? I'll let you do it. No, 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 you got it. All right, so I can do it? Yeah, go ahead. Well, well don't scare Now you put putting pressure on me. If you screw it up, it's on you. Well, I don't want to do it. No, you, you know how to do everything. No, no, no. Man, come here, Manny. You sound like Daniel. Daniel know how to do everything. Don't put that in the internet, neither. Mm, okay, honey? Okay. 
All right, y'all. So another thing I want to talk to you guys about is, believe it or not, if you don't change these pads in a decent amount of time, I've seen, for example, BMWs, the M series, uh, AMGs, Corvettes, mostly BMWs. They don't change the brake pads fast enough. And what happens is that beautiful M or Brembo or SRT starts disappearing. The clear coat starts chipping. The brake dust starts eating into the clear coat of the rim. Luckily, he caught this on time. He's only got like maybe five to 8,000 miles on this uh, Durango Hellcat. That carbon, that brake dust is not gonna eat away at his clear coat. His rims are gonna last a lot longer. And um, he doesn't have to look ugly driving around with dusty brown brakes. So um, keep in mind that this is important for your actual, the quality of your vehicle, okay, for the longevity. Me. Help me. I want to say thank you to my beautiful wife for always editing my videos, taking care of my videos, making sure you guys have amazing quality content. I want to thank God to my mom and my dad. Yes, Emmanuel Salazar Sr. You're a pain in the ass, but I love you. Shout out to Danny. I was going to say, Daniel gave you the foam thing. That's why I was trying to, you know. They're supposed to give me that stuff. You have no idea how much love I give that guy Ashley. on a daily basis. I'll cut that out. All right, do it again. Give a shout out to Daniel for giving me this uh, foam cannon thing. AKA Dark Knight. This foam cannon thing is amazing. Dark Knight is amazing. Cool ass dude. You know how I did Hugh's Instagram? We. We did Hugh's Hellcat. Uh -huh. Instagram. Hugh's Instagram is Hugh.Hellcat. Hellcat Hugh. Hellcat Hugh. Hellcat Hugh. Hellcat Hugh. Hellcat Hugh, right? Hey. Was it Hellcat Hugh? Hey, uh, Hugh, what is your Instagram? <laughs> Who are you? You? No, not me. You? Yes, I am you. So, are you still? On, are you in the Marine still? So, always in the Marine. Corps. Nobody knows. Hugh, right? you always in the Marine Corps. By the way, Hugh's gonna be coming to my house real soon. I'm about to do a cat delete and a kill switch on his vehicle, on his Hellcat, and uh, y'all y'all gonna meet him soon. So he's my. That's one of my very good friends, best friend ever, better than most friends that I have around here in, in the neighborhood. Bullshit. <laughs> He's gonna come around. That's my boy. What was I talking about? I don't know. The name. Instagram name. Oh. Yeah. I'm gonna name my name. My name is Toki Mopar. No. I, I told him. Check this out, babe. Tell me. Hey, all right. All right. All right. <laughs> you guys get in the comments and tell me if this is gonna be a really good way. If you guys could get me 20 likes. All right, on this on this idea in the comment section below, and I'm gonna pin this comment. If you guys give me 20 likes, that's gonna be his Instagram handle. What, Country Mopar? What about two cat kill? I got two cat. No, 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 no. I do like that one. That was not bad. Who came up with it? Redkey.kelty. Bam. But that'd be like kind of like Redkey Menace. I was just about doing my name, um, Redkey Menace. That way. I that way I can copy. No, Ranky Mopar. That way I can be Manny Mopar and Danny. And just piss them off. Cheese. I, I like cheese. Please do me a favor, guys. Two things that are very important after doing the brake procedure on this vehicle or any vehicle. If you're going to change the brake pads on a car, make sure that you prime the brakes. Once you get in the vehicle, the, ve the brakes are going to feel very soft. Don't just slam it into reverse because if you do, the vehicle's gonna go in reverse and you're not gonna have any brake pressure because all the fluid from priming the brake pads so you can take them out, it's not gonna be able to apply. It's not gonna have the car stop. 
So just prime the brakes really good a few times, hold it so that the brake pads can actually feel back to normal and uh, you'll, you'll be good to go. Uh, the second most important thing, torque your lug nuts. That's very important. Just because I hit it with the impact gun doesn't mean that they're torqued to spec. So make sure you hit it to 125, 135, whatever your vehicle uh, recommends and uh, you'll be good to go. That's all I got for you guys. Please do me a favor, uh, follow my boy on Instagram. All right, he's got some pretty awesome builds. And uh, subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate all the support that you guys have been giving me. Do me a favor guys, stay tuned. I also have another video most likely coming soon for my boy Dashpack underscore 392. He's got a fully built scat pack, properly built, beautiful, impeccable. Got some really nice choices done to his charger. And uh, I, I want you to check that out. Who knows, maybe we'll do some fun runs, some low rolls. Maybe he can take on my TRX, who knows? But we're about to find out, guys. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for everything you've done for me. And uh, please, show my wife some love. She did a lot of work for these videos. Uh, so stay tuned, all right? What do we say? Peace out. All right.